Hi everyone. The concept of heating, cooling, and growing degree days is a short topic covered in Chapter 3 of Meteorology Today by Aarons. In the next few slides, I'll go through an introduction of what each of these three concepts is and give you some examples of how you can manually compute each of the three values. A heating degree day is a value of the demand on the heating industry to provide uh, heat and comfort when the temperatures drop off below 65 degrees Fahrenheit. In this graphic here you see what the average heating degree days are for a year at any one particular point in the United States. On the chart we see that in the furthest north latitudes across North Dakota, northern Minnesota we have the highest number of heating degree days on average for the year compared to across southern Texas and southern Florida where we have a fraction of a day of heating degree days. This makes sense. So colder temperatures farther north you go, and then the warm temperatures modified by the warm water, the Gulf of Mexico, and the Gulf Stream in the Atlantic. If you wanted to compute what the heating degree days are, you first have to approach the problem of how we're going to set this problem up. It's a three-step problem. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to calculate the average temperature for the particular day we want to compute heating degree days for. Step two. If the value of the average temperature is below 65 degrees, meaning that it's cold enough that the consumer would want to heat their home, we subtract that value from 65. If the average temperature that you compute in step two is actually above 65, meaning that there was no need to heat their home, your answer is going to be zero. In this example, I've taken the 24-hour temperature trend for Ramstein Air Base in Germany and plotted it on the chart in the bottom right-hand corner. If we're going to set this problem up to compute how many heating degree days we had on the 25th of January 2013, we see that the high temperature for the day was 27 degrees Fahrenheit. We see that the low temperature for the last four hours of the day was 25 degrees Fahrenheit. The average temperature between these two values computes to 26 degrees Fahrenheit. 27 plus 25 divided by 2 will equal 26. To compute the heating degree days, since 26 is lower than 65, we subtract 26 from 65 and determine that there are 39 heating degree days. Now to address the asterisk, that is by the 26 degree Fahrenheit mark. We determine that average of 26 by simply averaging the high and low temperatures, which is a simple and rudimentary way of determining an average temperature for a day. However, when you are given all 24 hours of the day to measure temperatures from whatever location you're looking at, if you were to actually average out all 24 values, which is to sum up the 24 values and divide by 24, you actually come up with an average temperature of 27 degrees Fahrenheit for the day your new resulting heating degree day value would be 38 heating degree days. On a day-to-day -day calculation, that one heating degree day value may be insignificant. However, as you add up days across the entire year, that slight error adds up over time and it can become a, a significant uh, statistical error uh, that you'll want to take into account when analyzing the heating degree days and again also for cooling and growing degree days. In example number two, we're going to do the same thing again, only I'm looking at San Antonio, Texas from the 25th of January 2013, where I have a, a much larger temperature spread. We see on the chart in the bottom right hand corner that the high temperature was 79 degrees and the low temperature was 61. Simply averaging the high and the low temperature values, I come up with a 70 degree Fahrenheit temperature. Again, that's 79 degrees plus 61 divided by 2. Since 70 degrees Fahrenheit is greater than 65, meaning that there was no need in San Antonio on average to heat their homes, the value of the number of heating degree days is zero. Addressing the asterisk by the 70 degree value, if we were to average all 24 hours of temperatures, we'll see that the actual average temperature is 67 degrees Fahrenheit. It's still greater than 65 and we still have zero heating degree days but we see that the statistical error in this is, out, is growing. In the case of cooling and growing degree days, we're going to use similar processes. 
Starting with cooling degree days, the graphic that you're seeing on your screen right now is the average number of cooling degree days on any particular day across the United States. And once again, as we analyze the northern latitudes across Montana, North Dakota, northern Minnesota, Wisconsin, Michigan, we see we have much fewer cooling degree days than we do in southern Florida and the southwest portions of Texas. That makes sense. Where we have much warmer temperatures, we're going to spend more time, more days cooling and expending energy to cool than we would in the northern latitudes. A similar trend will be noticed when we look at growing degree days uh, statistically across the United States. Once again, we're going to set up this problem. To calculate the cooling degree days, we start off by looking at the average temperature for any one particular day. If the value that you compute in step one is above 65 degrees, meaning that it's warm enough that they'll want to expend energy to cool their home, for example, we subtract 65 from the average. If the average value in step one is below 65 degrees, meaning it's cool enough that they don't need to expend energy to cool anything, to cool their homes or businesses, the answer is going to be zero cooling degree days. Let's take a look at example three, the 24-hour temperature trend for Miami Airport, Florida, from the 25th of January 2013. As in the other examples, I've listed out the 24-hour temperature trends as reported by the airport observing systems. We see that the high temperature was 79 degrees and the low was 63, giving us an average of 71 degrees Fahrenheit. And again, that's 79 degrees plus 63 divided by 2 gives me 71 degrees Fahrenheit. Since 71 is greater than 65, meaning it's warm enough that they'll want to cool their homes, we subtract 65 from 71 and determine we have 6 cooling degree days. The actual average temperature in Miami is 69 degrees Fahrenheit. And I computed that by averaging all 24 values. And note that there's four cooling degree days when I use that value. Again, on a single day, it's not a statistically significant value. But as I, I add up all the days in a year, that two, de two degree day uh, difference can add up to a significant value over time. Growing degree days are computed in a similar manner as heating and cooling degree days. We assume that the temperature has to be greater than some type of baseline temperature. Each of these baseline temperatures is dependent on the type of crop they're growing, not necessarily on the latitude that they're growing on. The same process is used for setting up the problem as we did in cooling degree days. You're going to refer to table 3.2 on page 79 of your textbook to find out what the baseline temperatures are for each of the specific crops. So we'll set the problem up. In step one, we'll calculate the average temperature for the day just like we did for the heating and cooling degree day problems. Step two, if the value of the average temperature for the day is higher than the crop baseline temperature that you obtained from table 3.2 on page 79 of your textbook, subtract that crop baseline temperature from the average temperature computed in step one so that you come up with a positive number. If the average value of the average daily temperature computed in step one is less than the crop baseline temperature taken from table 3.2, page 79 of your textbook, your answer is zero growing degree days. And that means that the temperature is too cool for that crop to be growing. Example number four on growing degree days looking at how many growing degree days can we record for an Arkansas cotton crop using the information below. For simplicity, I'm using the same temperature values in this example only that I used in the previous cooling degree value from Miami Airport. The temperature spread should be significant enough to see the, the value of the growing degree days. The high temperature noted in the chart in the bottom right hand corner is 79 degrees. The low temperature is 63, giving us once again an average temperature of 71 Fahrenheit. Again, 71 is computed by averaging 79 degrees plus 63 divided by 2. If we look on our table 3.2 in our textbook, page 79, 
we see that for a cotton crop, Delta Smooth Leaf, Arkansas, the base temperature for that particular crop is 60. I've highlighted that in blue. You take the average temperature and subtract the baseline since it's warmer than the baseline and I determine I have 11 growing degree days. Now how would I apply that? Looking back on table 3.2, scientists have determined that in order to get a mature cotton crop in Arkansas, you need to have 1900 to 2500 growing degree days. On January 25th, we contributed 11 growing degree days to the total sum needed to have a complete crop. Once again, if I look at a more accurate statistical analysis of the average temperature, I find that the average temperature is really 69 degrees, averaging all 24 hours, and that computes to 9 growing degree days. Here the statistical analysis we would show that as that error adds up over time, we would end up having a longer growing season with lower growing, uh, fewer growing degree days computed. I hope this uh, little mini lecture here helped you understand cooling degree days, heating degree days, and growing degree days. If you have any questions, please feel free to drop me an email or give me a call and I'll explain this. If you have any other questions about other topics you'd like to have videos like this produced for, please let me know. Thank you.